everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to wrap up my February reading. Also, I was going to originally film a video about the ALA Youth Media Awards. So I'm going to insert some of those clips here where I'm reviewing two of those books. And those are actually the first two books that I read for this month. The first one is The Last Night at the Telegraph Club. And then the second one is The Last Cuentista, which is the one that won the Newberry this year. I ended up thinking this one was okay. I gave it a three star rating on Goodreads, but the more I'm thinking about it, the more I feel like it's probably like a two and a half star. I just didn't like the pace of this book and I didn't really like that all of the action and all of the like resolution of all of the conflict happened in like the last fourth of the book. I also really didn't feel like I truly got to know the characters. I wish I felt more for them. The main character but also like her love interest. I didn't feel like I learned that much about her other than the fact that she likes planes. I really like the setting and the time period that the author's exploring here but I just think I didn't really love the story. It took me a long time to finish this book like a week I think to actually finish it just because I wasn't as excited to pick it up. If you like slow historical fiction books and especially if you love books um, with lesbian main characters at the center I think you would really like this it wasn't all the way there for me the storytelling and then the other one that I finished that I liked more was The Last Cuentista by Donna Barba Higuera I love the cover of this book definitely like really grabs you the thing about this book is that <laughs> like the other book the genre of it is not for me. It's a sci-fi book. I don't really read sci-fi books. I also feel like that for this book it was that sci-fi element that took me a long time to finish this book as well. It's now February 8th, 9th. I've only read two books this month so far. It just feels like that's not my typical speed and it's mostly because I didn't feel like yes I need to find out what happens next. I really did like the focus on family in this book and I also enjoyed there were like a few twists and turns especially towards the end that were kind of surprising to me that I enjoyed. It wasn't my favorite and I didn't really love the ending and I was kind of confused by the ending. The only other downfall for this book is that I don't really know the motives of the collective so like the bad guys in this book. I don't know why they are the way they are. They just are and they're just bad. Like there's no real dimension to them. It is good to have just another sci-fi middle grade I think to recommend to kids who like that kind of stuff because there are not that many and there's also not that many that have buzz in the way that this one does. The next book that I read was Huda FRU by Huda Fami and this is a young adult graphic novel, mostly like a memoir. She lives in a neighborhood that does have a lot of Muslim people and a lot of people who wear hijabs um, and like previously she basically lived her life being like the hijab girl and so being in, an, in a sea of people that are just like her makes her question herself how she's going to stand out. So the book is mostly her just looking into interests or friend groups that she might want to be a part of and not really knowing where she fits in, in in there. I think that the humor was on point and I also really enjoyed the main character. I did feel like a lot of it felt very hurried and all over the place and a little bit manic, like non-stop. Sometimes it was hard to understand the main character more complexly. It just needed to slow down a little bit to hit those like emotional notes. Um, that was what was missing for me. Another book that was part of the ALA Youth Media Awards video that I was going to film and that's um, Revolution in Our Time, The Black Panther's Party's Promise to the People. This one got an honor for Prince and um, what I didn't realize because I listened to it is that it is like a full, you know, colorful, nice paper image heavy book and I think that's something to bring up in case you're interested in reading this because I didn't see any of the pictures until after I was done with the book and listening to it. This is a history of the Black Panther Party and its rise, kind of what they stood for and its demise. It also looks into how the government tried to stop them and the things that they tried to do to always like stay within the law. They were a very smart group in that way. It does come across like in a very positive manner and I definitely like feel like the, the values and the you know core beliefs that they stood for are very uh, commendable but it does come across in that way where it's um at times feels like a little bit like deifying or glorifying the black panthers and it's not so much like a historian's point of view where it tries to suss out everything it's not anything that like knocked it down for me it's just like an editorial choice that i didn't necessarily expect when i started reading it i do feel like it filled in a lot of the things that i wasn't as aware about and i would recommend this if you are interested in learning more about the black panther party after that i read cult 
Cultish, The Language of Fanaticism by Amanda Montel. This is a book that looks into the language that cults and cultish groups use to really grab their followers and love bomb them and create new members. I really found a lot of these segments super interesting. Like there's parts where it talks about like fitness gurus and it talks about like CrossFit and core power yoga and things like that. It also talks about like uh, multi-level marketing, which I found really interesting as well. These are like things that aren't legit cults, but that definitely have followings and have ways of speaking that do feel very cult-ish. I have two main like complaints about this book. The first one being that this book does focus a lot on cults. That's not necessarily what I wanted to get out of this book and it's not like what the book is framed as. I do think that the author's really interested in those groups and leaned on some of that. Why the language that is used like in Jonestown or you know in Scientology, how that translates to you know cult-ish groups that aren't serious cults. I do wish that it had focused more on the cultish groups because that's kind of like the point of the book, cultish, not cults. And then the other thing that I found kind of annoying at times is that the author would say like, oh, I'm mentioning this now and it's going to come up again in the next chapter, so just hold on tight. And she did that quite a lot and it got kind of like aggravating after a while, especially like on the audiobook version of it, of being kind of like dangled something that, some information that's going to come later. It's like, just tell me then or just, I don't know, like segue it better. It was kind of annoying and I wish that had been different. After that I read Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Casimano and this was a really fluffy book. I guess I expected that, like that was the point of the book, um, but I think I felt a little bit let down by it compared to like how much other people have loved it. For me what it comes down to is that this does end up being kind of like a cozy mystery and I do not have a good history with cozy mysteries for sure. If you've watched my channel, any cozy mystery that I try it just does not work for me. Why that is is because you have to really suspend so much belief in this book. A lot of people they can suspend disbelief and it's just like a fun mental exercise for them but I feel very critical of those kinds of things and it just doesn't work for me. Another thing that I didn't love about this book is that one of its main plot points deals with like Russian mobsters and that's something that always turns me off in books too. It's just like a personal thing. I'm not really fascinated by those kinds of storylines. I think a lot of the times books use them as like the villains but I did enjoy kind of like the pace of the book and I also enjoyed the love interest in the book. I love the snarkiness and it did have a lot of moments that were really funny so it's not like a bad book. It's just not a book necessarily that's for me. If you love books like that, I think think you would love it as well. After that I read the last book for my ALA Youth Media Awards and that one is Red, White and Whole by Rajani LaRocca and this is a book in verse, a middle grade book in verse that focuses on a main character who's Indian American and feeling like she does not fit in. It's set in the 1980s so it does have a lot of great like pop culture references to the 80s like music that was happening back then and it also has a big uh, focus on family and the mom in particular is a uh, Facing like an illness that the daughter is trying to you know understand and deal with mentally. This is a really tender book. It's really lovely. It's very emotional. A book that you're going to like your heart is going to be swelling and feeling sad and it's still really lovely though. I feel like there's an optimism to it and the main character is someone that you're really rooting for. It does have like its sad moments but ultimately I think it is like an uplifting book that deals with kind of understanding yourself coming of age and and caring for your mother and your family. After that I read Jason Reynolds and Jason Griffin's Ain't Burned All the Bright and I really love this book. Like it's a four and a half five star book for me. I think just the way that it's laid out is incredible. It is so beautiful and I need to do more research because I recently watched um, Marina's video reviewing this book and she mentioned that it was actually like Jason Reynolds only came up with a few words and then Jason Griffin took those words and then made this whole collage thing and I think if that's the case then Jason Griffin is like the star of this because it's the way that it's laid out and it's the repetition that's coming from those words that make it so impactful. This is a book that focuses on a family, particularly a young boy who has a, an older sister and an older brother and then a mom and a dad and they're kind of in this house watching summer 2020 happen basically and that includes the COVID-19 pandemic and the dad is also facing an illness that's keeping him locked away in his room. There's also of course the Black Lives Matter protests after the George Floyd killing and you know Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery, all of those things that happened in that summer. This refrain that just keeps coming back 
and forth about breathing and um, about like people not being able to like turn away turn away from the news and fix the problems like they're just kind of stuck in a situation the artwork in here the collaging is is exemplary and it's a book that I really really loved and if you just have like 30 minutes on you I think it's so worth your time picking up then after that I read a book that I had to return um, and that's from the roots up this is book number two in surviving the city this is by Tasha Spillett and it's um, illustrated by Natasha Donovan whose illustrations I love this is a book about Canadian teens who are indigenous and it's about them becoming a group together kind of challenging some of the traditions in their indigenous community that are not very inclusive to all and this whole series in my opinion it's just like a very inclusive open-hearted caring look at kind of making this indigenous community more open to all types of people and I really value it for that in this book we're mostly focusing on gender identity and how sometimes in indigenous communities only men can do this or only women can wear this when they're doing their dances there are elders in the community that are really against changing that but there are also elders in the community that are in contact with these teens that are a little bit more open-minded about these things it's a series that I do love picking up. At times it does feel a little bit formulaic or like, you know, the crescendo and like the the beats that you're going to go through in the story but I still think that it's worth my time and I think the illustrations in particular are just so fabulous and like exactly my cup of tea I really love Natasha Donovan's illustration after that I read The Golden Hour this book focuses on a main character who is facing trauma and PTSD from a gun violence event that happened in his school his way of using photography to kind of ground himself and calm himself when he is having attacks of anxiety. This book is really beautiful. I love the illustration styles. I love the colors. Um, I love the main characters. There's three main friends and I also really enjoyed the setting. This book it actually takes place kind of like on a rural area which I didn't necessarily expect. I feel like a lot of the times when you're reading graphic novels like this they always take place in like you know urban or suburban places not necessarily rural places so I did enjoy this because it does focus on like taking care of cows and like chickens and farm chores that these kids are doing a lot of this has to deal with the main character and his mom being at odds sometimes with how the main character is dealing with his PTSD there's also lovely tender friendships in this and particularly the two boy main characters there are some I think some queer undertones they are not explicit at all so I'm like I don't know if I was reading too much into that I feel like a lot of the reviews that I read felt that way I did so love like how these friendships were forming and how those two friends are really just there to hug the main character and tell him that it's going to be okay I would definitely recommend this book it was really really sweet I would definitely also pick up anything else that this uh, author illustrator writes next the one that I finished after that was Super Pump the Battle for Uber by Mike Isaac I ended up giving this book four stars this book was not as compelling as the Instagram one that I read really recently and I think it has to do with the uh, author's style his writing style is very I don't know if bro -y is the right way to frame it but he's definitely like very into the entertainment aspects of this culture and of these moves these moves that are being made in business he writes this book in a way that makes you want to keep reading and the pace of it and kind of like the excitement that he is writing the cliffhangers that he's kind of leaving every chapter do make you want to keep reading i didn't feel like the people who are depicted in this book had three-dimensional qualities to them maybe they don't maybe they are just this egotistical i felt like the instagram founders came across a lot more three-dimensional and complex in the sarah fryer book this book focuses on the rise of uber which was fascinating to me because i actually didn't know how it came about I didn't know that Lyft came up with basically having peer-to-peer -peer driving so like anybody can drive anybody and it used to be more like a luxe thing where you'd call like a big car if you're like a business executive that, that was what uber was for um, and it really changed after like Lyft got involved and they wanted to compete and stuff it's really fascinating to see also like how the taxi industry fits into this and like government entities and how you know uber was basically like not following laws and they just plowed through the ceo that you're following here and one of the founders is travis kalanick he is just a character definitely not someone that i think is someone we should 
emulate or anything like that um, he really looks up to like Jeff Bezos he just comes across to me as someone who will literally do anything to make it to the top and accomplish his goals there's also really interesting aspects in here where you look into venture capitalists and how they deal with these kinds of CEOs and founders there's kind of like this balance that they want to root for the founders because they have these great ideas and they just want to let them do the work but then also you have to rein them in some of the things that are related in here about the kinds of parties and the kinds of drugs and the kinds of ways they treated sex workers it's just like what like what um it's it's a little bit unbelievable and i feel like i've never belonged to a company that acted that way or treated employees and people around them that way so for me it's just really hard to get into understanding that this made me want to pick up uncanny valley which is um a memoir from a woman who was part of silicon valley and the kinds of things that she saw because this is definitely like a man's world and it's definitely like a young white frat stars world in my opinion yeah it's really hard to root for travis kalanick but it was a really fascinating look at his company the writing is a little bit over the top every chapter does and kind of like in a cliffhanger i was entertained though and i did enjoy the book also did you know that this is going to be a series on showtime very soon with joseph gordon levitt as travis kalanick which i found fascinating and like quentin tarantino is narrating i don't know there's just like big stars attached to this i had no idea that this show was happening until i wikipedia this book and then i realized mike isaac is actually writing another book right now about facebook and it's going to be the second season of that show so i'll see if i if i pick up another book by Mike Isaac and then the book I finished after that was What Just Happened by Charles Finch. This is not on a long year it's literally just little notes the whole book is structured that way and it's dated by days of the year. Charles Finch was given an assignment to write about the pandemic as it was actively happening so it's kind of like a capsule of taking you back to the beginning of the pandemic. Reliving all of those things was a weird headspace for me to be in. He also focuses a lot on the kinds of things that were getting him through and a lot of that ended up being music. His music taste is fascinating to me and I think it's a thing that I found charming because I also like Taylor Swift and Casey Musgraves and he focuses a lot on that in this book um, just how that music made him feel. He also talks a lot about his weed use which I found interesting how much that took up this book. He really questions like why he's using marijuana and a lot of the times he says you know like I'm it's just a calming thing and it's fine and I have it under control but it really over the course of the pandemic becomes like this self-medicating coping mechanism that he develops that he then understands is like a toxic thing that he is doing to his body. Towards the beginning of the book he talks about being immunocompromised. He explains like his illness and so that's a different perspective of like how he's dealing with the pandemic because really does not want to get COVID and end up in a hospital which is a total likelihood because of his illness but I do think he's vulnerable but only to an extent he does not really want to focus on that and I think that's where this book is not as memorable for me is that it's a memoir in parts where he's kind of giving himself a little bit to you but not fully I don't think he he was really ready for that I think this book feels more like a political look at what's happening and like a you know like a look at it from a citizen perspective more so than like a personal perspective of like how am I going to deal with COVID if I get it. Last but not least, the book that I just finished today on February 28th is The Department of Speculation by Jenny Offill. I actually did not really like this book that much. I ended up giving it two stars. It did not hit the way that weather hit and I think it's because I didn't really love the main themes and the main character that we're following. This is a book about marriage and a marriage deteriorating when you have a child as well. It's done in the same snippet fashion, extreme of consciousness, telling you things that she is thinking. It has that same style and that's not really what bothered me because I really love that in weather. I think what made this book less successful to me than weather is the focus on that personal look into being a wife and having this marriage deteriorate. I didn't really care for the main characters journey. I definitely thought that weather hit so much more to me because of the political aspects of it where I think this one is a lot more looking inward in relationships and that just wasn't as interesting to me. I'm currently listening to Will by Will Smith and I'm almost done. I'm like 70% of the way through so I will hopefully finish that one within the next couple days and I'll talk about it in my next wrap-up. Get started on my middle grade March reading and then some new books that I have currently out. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and if you read any of these books or would like to read any of these books now that you've heard me talk about them, please let me know in the comments. I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.